me show you a couple of things that we're doing here at ACC for some of our customers. Let's start with a little bit of a demonstration first. An ignition screen starting off at an overview level, not that different from what Alex showed us before within the four walls of a plant. This particular process industry uh, application uh, has a wide geography associated with it, as you can see. There are also, as and I think Alex mentioned this as well, and, and so did uh, Frank, multiple uh, end users of these systems. Uh, we need to keep those in mind as well. So for example, uh, in this particular application, we have an operations group, but we also have uh, finance groups which are interested in telemetry uh, for the sale of the material that's being made. And we have a logistics team, uh, a dispatch team essentially, which need to track inbound and outbound freight to these sites. So at a glance from this level screen, I can see the status of each of the production areas and interconnect or dispatch areas. I can also see in route trucks that are en route or, uh, or at a location. Color coding gives us a very simple way of understanding whether or not a site is in good working condition or if there are some alarms that need attention. And I interact with the screen too, to some extent I can of course zoom in and out. I can float over a particular icon and then see the site's name, the number of alarms, the current uh, fill status of a particular production area, et cetera. Same with any of these sites here. And they size differently based on the size. Over here in the flyout menu, on the top we have a main menu here, which will give us the ability to look at some different parts of the system here. I can zoom out again here. And on the flyout menu here, I can actually navigate across the different areas and actually zoom in on a particular area here, jump into that and go right to that location. Now, similar to one of the screens that Alex showed before, uh, we have a, a screen that shows some specific KPIs and information that are pertinent to the operations team and or the dispatch team when it comes to looking at a particular site. So looking at this particular site, these widgets that are built in the ignition dashboarding tool allow a user to see at a glance the information that is critical to running that operation. They animate based on alarm conditions. They show them through either standard text descriptions or through gauges and or charts, the values of data that are, uh, are important to that operation. And as Alex showed, you can actually customize these, and use the dashboard component to build a set of pre-made widgets for an end user. We can add that widget in, and then we can set that to a different location and pull up data for that location. This allows us to not just design screens that are built for the different audiences that we need to consider, but actually build components for screens that we can let our end users define screens. So many of us will, will struggle designing screens and building systems across different industries to know exactly what is important at any given moment for a particular user's role, whether they be an operator or a safety engineer, a supervisor, a business level uh, executive. What we can do is unchain the system and let them customize it. It's a pretty powerful tool. And from here, I can actually load standard dashboards or even save my own dashboard, give it a name, put it under my username, and then that dashboard will be there in perpetuity for my work later on. Another interesting thing about these widgets in particular, and this kind of design, this tile-based design, and Mara mentioned it before, is that when you're working with tiles like this, you have an opportunity to block the screen, if you will, so that you can take advantage of that responsive design. So for example, I'm running in a browser here, as we are with perspective, and I can use that browser and its debug window to switch the form factor of the screen. So instead of looking at this the way we are as if it were on a desktop, I can say, well, what would this look like if I was on an iPhone 12 Pro? And you can see that it'll fold up very nicely. Things remain readable, things remain navigatable. I can work with the screen remotely as I'm moving throughout a facility or as if I'm in route to a facility, I'm actually in a truck. In the facility, I might want to use an iPad or some equivalent of a tablet. And so the tablet gives us a different view. And of course, you can even test rotation of these. So these debugging tools within the browser give us a great opportunity to look at a lot of different screen sizes and take advantage of the responsive design that's already built into Ignition. A couple of the important practical things that we like to keep in mind at ACC when we're designing for our customers who for the most part are in process industries. 
there are several standards in this space that are very important for design uh, and they influence HMI. One of them chiefly is the ISA 101 standard, which is an HMI design and standard guide. Uh, Mara mentioned in her best practices portion of this presentation, many of the key things that are pointed out in ISA 101. It really comes down to something that's called in a broad sense, human factors engineering. And Alex and Frank both touched on this as well. Understanding your users, understanding operationally how they will use the system and then making sure the system works for them. It is a tool and they want to be able to do their job safely and efficiently. So they need to see the information that they are interested in immediately, minimize the number of clicks and navigation requirements, put the information on that screen at a glance and also use, as Mara pointed out, color to pull attention to things that need to be addressed. Things that are running in a standard operation, statically, or in a powered off mode or in a safe mode, those can be limited, blunted, essentially using a gray palette or a color that's more muted. Another important standard that is, is important in the process industries that we pay a great deal of attention to here at ACC is the ISA 88 standard. And to some extent, this falls into the category of modular design, which Mara pointed out and, and uh, talked about at length in her presentation. The idea that you can use ignition elements such as UDTs and templated graphics to build standard modules. And the way we design systems at ACC, we'll build those standard modules from the control layer, building the control logic, the control module, the equipment module, and then layer that into the paired UTT with an ignition all the way up to the templated graphic so that we're building these foundational graphics throughout the entire process from control system all the way up tightly integrated into the ignition process. So again, an overview display, at a glance information of the process flow, make it simple. Don't necessarily copy or put the uh, P&ID diagram into your screen <laughs> per se. We've, we've been guilty of that uh, as, as, as engineers, I'm sure, for many of us. But better to redesign that, re redraw it essentially at a very high level. Uh, you can use this for navigation as well as at a glance situational awareness. Uh, but I should be very easy, should be very easy for me to understand the process flow, what relates to what, and what is in an alarm condition or in an unsafe condition, so that I can spend my time paying attention to those things. Another important thing to understand too, and, and, and we become, as HMI designers, really experts, we should become experts, at the processes that we're trying to design against. And that means understanding some of the background behind what we're trying to control or what the, the end customer is trying to produce. One of the, um, the, the great ways to depict this is with a, with a polar diagram, uh, like the one depicted here on the right-hand side. Um, the idea that there are multiple variables that are related to keeping a process in control and being able to see at a glance, is that process in control or is it out of control? And what variable is attributing to that out of control or drifting from control condition? A polar diagram is a really great way to do that. You know, it's not necessary that we don't show PNID diagrams on our screens. So again, we can simplify them, but we should make them simplified. We should allow for a mobile format or responsive design. In this case, of course, it's difficult to have a PNID diagram that's not really based on a set of tiles uh, fold and collapse on itself. What we typically do is we provide an alternative view when switching to that mobile platform. We'll depict the same data as it's depicted on the right-hand side in more of a tabular view. Whereas if you're in the HMI on a desktop or on an enclosure on the plant floor, you would see the more fully laid out PNID diagram. Again, shape and color are very important. I think Mara pointed this out as well. It's not just color, but it's also shape, right? The ability to say that, hey, there's something different about this screen and I can see that that's bolded. I can see there's a symbol by it. So even a colorblind individual could see very quickly that there is a problem with that particular temperature probe. And then finally, when I talk about that intuitive control, when I talk about incorporating both elements of ISA 101 and ISA 88 into design, I think about phases in 88, control modules, equipment modules. It's important to build those face plates, as we like to call them, in a consistent design. Things are laid out in the same way. Um, as Frank pointed out, you have tabs on there. So at a, you know, a simple click, you can navigate between different parts of that same dialogue without having to navigate to different screens. 
Operators have quick access to things that they need to understand, such as are there permissives that are not being met holding up a particular part of the process? How long have we been executing this process? The key commands to run that process, if necessary, in manual mode. Set points and whether those set points and parameters are in range. And when we're in a particular step in a long running process, what is that step? Very often at the control system level, those steps are encoded as they are on the right-hand side with numbers. That's pretty common practice in 88 design, but those numbers mean something. They mean something from a process perspective. We wanna make sure our screens are usable from an operator perspective. They don't need to know what 450 is. They know they're in the transferring portion of the phase.